Okay. All right. So um, I think we're ready to start. All right. So hello and welcome. I'm David, David Reyes, Curator of Exhibitions and Collections for the Huntsville Museum of Art. And I'm here today with my colleague, Catherine Purvis, Registrar for the Museum. We're pleased to host the museum's sixth virtual artist talk and studio visit in connection with the exhibition Encounters Althea Murphy Price, which is currently on view at the Huntsville Museum of Art through May 23rd, 2021. Thank you all for joining us. Since 1986, the Huntsville Museum of Art has presented a series of solo exhibitions highlight, highlighting recent work by acclaimed regional contemporary artists. These encounters exhibitions showcase artists at mid-career who are working in various styles and media and afford the viewers an opportunity to see how creative inspiration combines with subject and materials to convey a unique artistic expression. Our current Encounters exhibition focuses on the accomplished works of Althea Murphy Price, a printmaker and sculptor from Knoxville, Tennessee. Before we begin, I want to thank our lead sponsors of the exhibition, Sasha and Charlie Seeley, as well as our supporting sponsors, Bobby Bradley and Charlie Burris, Diane and James Reynolds, and Ina and Garrett Smith. I also want to remind everyone that during the course of this program, you can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to type in any questions and as we go through the exhibition, I'm sorry, as, type in the, ex, the questions and at the end of the proceedings, hopefully we'll have time to answer some of those questions. And now I'll hand over the program to Catherine Purvis who will introduce today's artist, Althea Murphy Price. Thank you, David, and good afternoon to everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce Althea Murphy Price. The accomplished works of Althea Murphy Price focus on a key element of the beauty industry to explore aspects of self-perception in contemporary culture. Althea addresses the links between individuality and assimilation and their influence on personal identity by using artificial hair as both subject and medium, exploring its physical and psychological place as a transformative embellishment and as a potent signifier of race. She uses lithography, photography, installation, and sculptural practices to explore these concepts, playing on the deceptive nature of manufactured hair and the effort of beauty maintenance. Althea was born in San Jose, California, and grew up in Boulder, Colorado. She received her BA in studio art from Spelman College in Atlanta, and went on to earn an MA in painting and printmaking from Purdue University and an MFA in printmaking from the Tyler School of Art at Temple University. She is currently Associate Professor of Printmaking at the University of Tennessee. She has participated in many exhibitions nationally and internationally, and her work is in several museum collections across the country, including here at the Huntsville Museum of Art. We are excited to welcome Althea Murphy Price. Althea? Hello, hello everyone. Thank you so much. That was such a nice introduction. Um, I feel like I don't even have to show my work. <laughs> but, um, but thank you so much for um, giving me such a nice introduction and also partnering the work because um, there are a number of, there's a number of aspects I think of my work that are so personally tied to, um, to myself and my background. Um, and so I always feel like the need to contextualize um, what the work looks like. And so I'm gonna start off in showing a short um, PowerPoint presentation um, of, of my work and just kind of talk about my background, a little bit about like kind of trajectory, like how I ended up where I started and how I ended up here. Um, I am in Knoxville, Tennessee. And so then I'm gonna show you my studio um, and um, my um, my studio is, well, I'll talk about more of that later, <laughs> but I wanna really get through the PowerPoint quickly. I'm gonna kind of go through quickly. I'm gonna show you a video and then um, spend the rest of our time um, showing you um, the space that I work in. So, um, so let me just share my screen quickly. Actually, excuse me, that's not right. Okay, let me 
see if I can do it again. Okay. Okay, this just takes a second to get through this like, here we go. Okay, um, so I already gave you, like I've kind of talked about the work a little bit already. Um, so I, I started working so as closely as my work is aligned today, I started working um, or, or exploring some of these ideas and materials while I was still studying graduates in my graduate study. Um, I studied at Purdue University in, um, in West Lafayette, Indiana. And at the time there first in that, um, in, in that experience, I was studying um, more painting and printmaking. So it was a kind of combination of the two. Um, and it was really an opportunity for me to experiment a lot with both of the media. So um, which really started to extend into this kind of dimensional surface and building surface. So at the time I was trying to combine both printed ink and paint pigment together um, and was working on flat or two dimensional surfaces, but I quickly became kind of unsettled with that. And I started to build on those surfaces with different types of materials. Um, so fast forward after I finished that, um, after I finished studying there, I studied, um, at Tyler School of Art in Temple, Temple University in Philadelphia. And um, this is where I started incorporating and exploring how can I take this 2D format or this mode of working in printmaking, which is where the area of my study was, and how can I make it more um, tangible? And I had long been really enticed by working with a material that was fibers based, and I found hair. And so um, this is some of the first explorations that I did with hair. Um, and this is a this is a print. It's it's fairly large. Um, it's a soft ground print. So um, one of the first ways I was exploring is how do I take the actual material itself and just imprint it um, in order to make a image. Um, and so that's what this is. I'm imprinting the hair onto the um, onto a, um, a, a plate and then printing from that. So that was a intaglio print. Um, these are the first two prints I ever did with hair and they're both big. So this one is seven foot, seven foot by seven foot pay, um, print. It's on Okawar paper, it's screen printed. And so of course I had to figure out like, how can I work with a material like hair, but through different media? And so intaglio was one approach I tried, screen printing was another. Uh, and um, one thing that immediately struck me is that working in this way where I'm looking for impression and using impression would produce life size or life scale work, which meant it would produce larger work, right? Because I was referencing the actual, um, the, the object itself. Um, that one, that one was called um, "Made in China." Uh, so, other ways that I experimented, um, I experimented with screen printing and actual hair material. So, this is a a swatch of blonde hair that's screen printed with a, a word "lie," L-I-E. Uh, you can see that closer there. Um, and then at the end of my graduate study, I ended up creating um, a big portion of my project for my um, thesis exhibition was um, these sculptural forms that were wearable hats. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I'll go through them first. This is called Others. And so these were, um, or are, <laughs> they are uh, hair and wool uh, felted together. And um, so the work really branched into really sculpture and textiles, which was something um, I was always very interested in. And um, so it's kind of inevitable for me to get to this point. Uh, and I'm gonna go through these relatively quickly. Um, some of these components though that I'm gonna show you in the studio today are still some like, you know, they're still oscillating and they're still valid and forms that I can use. Um, so you can really just see kind of where the origins of like some things have stuck and stayed the same. Um, so these are some other experiments that I did with hair. So some places of inspiration. 
Um, this is an image from a beauty supply store when I was living in Philadelphia. Um, but still today, these spaces are hold a lot of significance for me and a lot of inspiration. This is like an extended space of an art supply for me. Um, so these hair supply stores with their hunt, like thousands and thousands of mass quantity produced um, um, man-made uh, um, and commodities that are hair and these forms of like interchangeable forms of identity, um, ways of appearing, um, changing your appearance, appearance, and also accessories. And so it was like this space is that's mass produced um, um, and commodity. I was always I've always been kind of fascinated by the fact that this is, can be a space that is in the business of creating disguise, um, but is also equally serves this purpose as that is one that's encouraging, right? And supportive and um, encouraging for an individual who's like seeking to change their appearance or look differently or, um, or see themselves as they ha would have, have them, um, themselves be seen. So, um, another point of inspiration were when I was in graduate study, um, these are images from graduate study, but this is a point of inspiration, really as long as I, um, as terms of my farthest back memories, are church hats. And so um, you can tell kind of the similarities between these images that I'm showing you here and the work that I showed you from, um, from, um, from those earlier slides. Uh, so this is another point of inspiration uh, and um, and is still, I think, really relevant. These are advertisements from the 1920s and earlier um, that were hair advertisements. They're really beauty advertisements. Men prefer beauty. Uh, and um, this is this is so I at first I found this interest in working with a material that was tangible that um, I could relate to because I found a lot of relationship between this like idea of like hair and the synthetic hair, this commercial space and buying it in a very personal way I connected to that because it was very familiar. Um, and and of course I recognize that there's a lot of politics, a lot of history and culture surrounding the topic of um, hair and identity. Um, but it was seeing these advertisements as also fueled um, a reaction for me and how I thought about um, the power really of the symbol and how I could use that. So, you know, if you look at these this before and after, which is clearly, um, um, which is clearly unachievable. And that's something I'm still thinking about today. So this is one of the pieces that's in the exhibit and, um, and this is called In Her Place. And I wanna talk about this series because um, these, I call this work, um, these my hair rugs. And um, this piece, when I first installed it, in the bottom portion of it was on this, uh, you're seeing this like cement floor. Um, and so there, it's, it's, it's installed in a gallery at um, Huntsville Museum of Art in a very similar way. It's just actually, I like it even better. Um, so, um, but I wanted to show you some more of these works and just kind of talk about some ideas that are behind um, this work and where it came from. Um, this was the very first piece that I created uh, that uh, really in a lot of respects and um, at the time I had been doing a lot of um, working two dimensionally and working predominantly in printmaking and um, and was looking for a way to branch out of that in some ways. Like what ways can I explore um, beyond these like methods and the tradition? And, uh, and I kind of stumbled upon this. Um, so these are hair clippings. They are dusted and dispersed through a lace pattern and then arranged on the floor. They aren't, um, they aren't affixed on the floor so they can be blown or brushed. Um, and I've had, I've had plenty of those experiences happen in the gallery. Um, but I like the fact that they are easily influenced and they can be influenced by um, viewers of the work. Um, they exhibit a certain amount of control, right? Yet yeah, they don't quite maybe really contain or have that control. Um, so this is the, just an example of installing that piece. 
And so you can see this is really a tablecloth and it's dusted through to create this one here. And um, this, so this next piece shows you a little how the work has changed and evolved over time. Um, so I started doing, um, I think that first experiment I showed you was 2000 and, um, gosh, 2005, 2004. And, um, and so I've been experimenting with this for a while. I, um, um, but really to tell you the truth, it's really gained more momentum in just the last few years for me and become more significant, significant um, more recently, I think. Uh, so this is this piece here was a partnering piece. So this is um, this is the same pattern, but there's sugar used to disperse the lace. And then it had a partnering piece, which was um, which was this manufactured human hair. So I was, in, I was thinking about um, the significance of desire and trying to explore that, like in that work. Um, this piece, um, this is one of my favorites, and this is one of my larger ones as well. So this is about mm, um, a six by a six by seven feet or so, a bit more than that. Um, and this is the largest one that I've done. This was I participated in a statewide. A contemporary drawing exhibition and this was exhibited um, for that exhibit and it's about eight um, eight by eight feet and um, it's a mixture of both this hair and sugar uh, and again using sugar thinking about this symbolism as something that is this was called a, a, this is called a sweet thought um, using it as something that is enticing desirable um, but what I'm really interested by in this work is the use of the, the lace as representative of, um, of really control in some sense. Um, and, um, and it being used as the stencil or this matrix, how it controls like what is falling through it, this remnant. So, um, so parallel to this work happening, because this work kind of slowly progressed, the hair work pieces, was this work. And this work happened really quickly. Um, in some respects, it's like the most laborious work, but it happened fairly quickly. This is a, this is a piece, um, this is called Love Affair. This is in the gallery. And um, David knows this piece well. <laughs> um, and it is installed. Um, it's a, it's several hundred of these pearl tip pins that are nailed individually into the wall, and they are wrapped. The tops of them are wrapped with synthetic hair. And so, while this is happening parallel, I think I'm still experimenting in some respects because um, in the hair rug pieces, I'm working with just like these kind of hair clippings, and it's very still two dimensional. Um, what I love about creating is the making and working with my hands. And, um, and so this involved labor and engaged labor in a way that I found more significant. Um, so in a lot of ways, this engagement with labor was like a methodology that I had already learned and practiced um, in my own personal life and in my own maintenance. And so, so just to kind of give you some suggestions there about how I think about that work. Um, this piece has been installed a lot of different ways before I actually settled on installing it this way. Um, so I just thought I would share those. They kind of took some like different formats. But the point is that I wanted to make is that really starting this piece, and this is the first one I did, I was just interested in working in like repetition. I was interested in building, working with my hands, and then like what happens if I do this over and over and over again. So. Um, so with the thought of like obligation and what that means in mind. Um, so this piece was the one that came after it and it's called Arrangement. It is um, also all synthetic hair that's been heat fused and, um, and then cut into these patterns and arranged back into these like flowers, those like synthetic flowers. There's also the combination of those pearl tip pins in this work and then also um, these silk leaves. So this is just an uh, example, which I'm going to show you in my studio anyway. I don't need to show you this. I've, I have experimented a lot with this material, and and um, and oftentimes not necessarily with a conceptual goal in mind, but rather more formal goals. So um, this piece was one of the last that I worked on, which is in the gallery, and it's called Number Six Thirteen, and it is 
Um, it's also fused, the synthetic hair is that I am using here is fused with heat, but not too much so that we can still see that it's like this like hair texture, but it's kind of defined the odds of what real human hair can do. Um, and, um, and then I'm able to cut them out and then arrange and then construct them. This is another one that's in the gallery. This is called Hot and Gold. That one was created using these rods and I was just fusing the hair over the rods. And this piece as well, this is called Sweet Tooth. And so I've, I've um, pulled out a bunch of material um, from this work and I recently created a piece that is somewhat inspired by that piece that's in the gallery. Uh, so all the while I'm doing two dimensional work, all the while I'm creating prints. And I wanna show these to you because this is a large part of the body of my work. And I think that the prints in my work represent really somewhat of a, a sketch or um, a sketch and searching and researching process. So um, these are all lithographic prints. And um, this one is very similar to the floor, those hair rugs, right? Like it's clippings. Um, and so there's some qualities of the print that I find still so inspiring. Um, it is um, a, a a print is made from a matrix, so it's made from an impression. Um, it requires that they, it generates a copy in creating it. Um, and the way that I'm engaging with these lithographic prints is that I'm using the actual hair material. Um, and I'm using, so what you're seeing in the image is also representative of the object itself. And so, um, so here it exists in these like kind of three different formats. And um, and the process does a pretty good job of replicating the pretty near exact um, appearance of, um, so it's deceivable too. Uh, so so um, um, I, I included these because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, the significance of the brand, because I think that that commodity um, has been, is largely something that I think it's expressed in my current work. Um, and so these are these are digital prints that were also kind of like mixed media too. It's hard to tell that in the photographs because they're covered in matte medium in this way that's kind of thick like packaging. Um, but I was, these here is using the direct labels of the packages and you can see how some of the packaging has its own problematic nature to it. Um, this packet, this brand of hair is called Doomy. Um, Miss Black, Yaki, like, so, you know, so it was, it's kind of this language that I really question, like, so this is this commodity, this is this object that is um, marketed towards this, really predominantly towards Black women, and, um, and then look how it's like, representing them. Um, some of that is, is a lot of that has changed now as there's more Black owned business um, that are taking control of this, but I think nonetheless, it's worth saying. So these prints here are also lithographic and I'm gonna just talk about them really quickly, but um, this is a series that I call Search Perfect. And, um, and all of these were generated by or inspired by my, the search results that I produce when typing in into Google um, and the search engine perfect hair. And so that the results of that search were pretty much representative of the same type of features, um, hair, even hair color um, and hair texture um, that are not of my own. And um, some of these um, as a black woman and as a black person. Um, and so some of this is changing now. It's, I think it's getting becoming more diverse, uh, but, um, um, but most of the images are of white women. Uh, and, and I think what this is symbolizing and saying is that this represents um, our general taste and our, the general searches that are happening just really in society. So what our expectations are. So that's what these were inspired by. And um, I'll show you some of these in my studio. Um, this has led to a place where I think I found this really balance between both the sculpture, um, the dimension 
form and the print and the two dimensional print. I love the relationship of the two dimensional becoming the three dimensional and vice versa. And in this method of working, which these are screen prints, and I'm going to talk about more about these, um, that I'm creating these collages and screen prints that are ink, um, either constructed like in this work where I'm I'm piecing together each little piece and creating a composition with that. So these are collages, or I'm building the ink up in layers so that the printed aspect of this here lithograph and combined screen print, the lithographic components are flat. Um, they're deceiving the through the screen printed elements are dimensionally printed, right? So they have this sense of dimension and surface to them. Um, some of them are flocked, um, so they have this kind of fuzzy surface. Some of them are shinier. Um, this piece is called Play, and you already saw some of this work, so I'm not going to focus on harp on this here. Um, so this leads us to the gallery and um, and the current the show and Huntsville, and I'm so excited and about being able to share this work with you in this exhibit. This was my first time really exhibiting this piece as I imagined and envisioned it, which is called Counter. And it represents the newest work that I've been doing, which is all three dimensionally printed. It represents a little over 120 or so. David knows what that number is um, of, <laughs> and Catherine too. Um, I would say 120, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, and um, pieces, and there are a variety of different objects that I consider and think of as tools and objects of building. And um, so I'll show you some of those. These are right out of the printer. I was gonna, I have a 3D printer in my studio, which I work from. Um, and then I also have access to other 3D printers when I need them. Um, and so these are images taken from some of those. So it's just the print like right after it's done and completed. And um, there's something really special about that. Um, these prints here still have this like kind of wide and broad and base on them. This is the support. And I'll talk about that a little bit too, because I find that really um, uh, a desirable part of the 3D printing because it still reveals that it's a, that it came from this two dimensional um, building method. Um, so this is the most recent work that I've done. And I've done this piece since installing, um, after installing the show in um, Huntsville and it's called Cushion. And um, it is exhibited at the TriStar, Gal TriStar Arts um, Gallery location, which is the Candoro uh, Marble Building in Knoxville. Um, TriStar is run by um, Carrie and Brian Job. Uh, they've done this amazing job of representing the artists of the state. Um, but this is a combination of both its synthetic hair and then these also three-dimensional three printed forms, kind of these like sharp tools. Uh, so this is the last work, and I'm going to go through this really quickly, um, but it's just a way to kind of talk about some of the ideas here, explored here. I started making this work inspired by um, the popular hashtag Black Girl Magic, and, um, but with taking a little bit of a, some skepticism um, and one recognizing that this hashtag has been used to, um, to encourage um, women women of color and, and young girls, um, but also I'm making this work really in response to what do those expectations, um, what do those expectations mean? Um, and what kind of weight can they have on a young mind and perspective? So um, so it's led to this work here, uh, which is the three 3D printed elements that you see in the counterpiece also exist here. So they kind of serve two different roles. These are gramophones um, combined with ladders. Um, here, these are like satellite dishes. There's some like tinker toys in there, cell phone towers. This piece is called Orbit. The one before that is called um, Requiem. Uh, and um, this piece. And there's some other forms I'm going to share with you in the studio today that didn't make it into the show, um, but I did photograph, but um, didn't didn't quite make the cut. <laughs> so let me. Um, so I'm going to stop. Oh, and this is last one is Black Bird Girl. So um, I am going to stop sharing, and I'm going to share with you a. Uh, let's see if I can do here. It's a little bit. Okay. Um, 
what I'd like to share with you is a little bit of a, like a, if you want to think about it as like a demonstration of my printing method. And you'll have to excuse me because this is not the best way to share my screen. So you're going to see kind of everything first, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but I, I think um, it'll still have the right to the results. Okay. So I have to still do it. So this is going to show you, I'm going to go through, um, 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 you're going to see the printing process um, and the lithographic printing process, me creating a plate and exposing it to light um, and using hair as a drawing tool. So Althea. I'm having some difficulty. I don't hope you guys, can everyone hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you now. Hopefully, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's having some difficulty with sound. So let me explain to you as I'm going through here. So the first part you saw is like, I'm using the hair and I'm, throw, and I'm placing and arranging it. So I'm drawing with it. This next stage is that that hair then is placed on this light sensitive surface, which is a, an aluminum plate, and it's put into this large exposure unit. So it exposes this UV light rays, which is like the light rays of the sun. Um, and it exposes it so that the areas of that were the hair that you saw that I was drawing with were blocking out light and um, those get retained onto the plate. So the next stage is developing. So I picked a really large plate um, to work with to share with you on this, um, but this is really as large as these plates go, um, that I can go at least with uh, my resources, So, um, which are pretty good resources. <laughs> um, you can see here they're being developed and, um, and so you can see the image of that same hair is now retained onto the plate and is, it's just like kind of green like form because here it's a negative. So the next stage is then printing it. And um, lithography is, is um, referred to as a planographic process because it prints off of a flat surface. And so I can choose any color that I want to work with and to print with, and it will adopt that color. And so I'm doing this blended, what I refer to as a blended rural transition from a dark color to a light color. And, um, and then I'll roll it onto the plate, but you'll notice while I'm doing that, I'm wetting the plate too. So because it's a completely flat surface, um, unlike some printing processes that are like stamp light where the surface is raised, it's not, it's the same level. Um, and it's the, wa it's the water that's there that retains the areas that don't attract ink. And it's those areas that repel the water that attract the ink and then um, I can print from. So, um, so that's what I'm getting ready to do here. So this is, um, this is a, a, the lithographic press and um, it puts an immense amount of pressure down, which I need because it's really detailed um, work. And so from there, then you can pull the print and that oh, nice. pretty much that. It's amazing how much detail you can get okay. in the graphic process. All right. So um so that's what I was going to share um, with you. I'm gonna um, I, I'm gonna transition now so that I can share with you the my studio space and what I do in this space. Yeah, so. that's pretty amazing. Um, I just as Althea kind of gets herself set up to show the the studio space, I just wanted to remind folks that you can type in your questions if you have any down in the Q and A uh, portion of the screen and. Um, Actually, I wanted to say that how amazing that lithography process is, how much detail you can get. And it's, it's hard to see from, uh, from the Zoom uh, perspective, the different textures and detail that you can see 
in those works, you really do have to see these pieces in person, the fine detail that, look like, that the lithography provides showing these very thin hair-like uh, aspects to the work versus the dimensionality of the screen printed portions uh, in the printed work. And again, that's just a small portion of what Althea has to show here at the museum. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am, um, everyone hear me okay? Yep. Testing, testing, okay. Yep, um, yeah, and so uh, it's the, the work that I have in the museum really is in a lot of respects, it's like a chronology of a lot of different practices. And, and one thing though, that uh, I think it does not just represent like older and newer work, but it's really the way I've always worked, which is a variety of different um, kind of intersecting, um, overlapping approaches, um, but exploring some of the same ideas. And so, um, so I wanted to show you this space and I'm gonna do my best as I walk around um, to, to make it clear for you. So, um, so please, um, Catherine and David, let me know if there's like something that's hard to see and I will do my best to correct it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> so this is a space, this is like my main work table. And um, um, I wanted to share with you um, kind of a lot of the things that I'm, that you'll see here on this table. Um, and actually, I'm we gonna... did it before. <laughs> huh? <laughs> it was pretty good where you had it, so. Oh, was it? Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to lower it. Now we can see, so see it. Um, so you, like, um, one of the things that I have, let's see, let's see, there we go. Okay. Um, like, I have a lot of these, like, dress form heads in the studio, and um, and you can see this, like, table is, like, covered in things that I, I work with. One of the things is, um, and I'm just going to do this if this is okay. Oh, excuse me. It's funny when you feel like you have the... Um, so I just wanted to show you some of the things that I'm like working, working with because it's the same things I showed you in the video, but I'm still like still using. So like for a lot of the like um, photographic work that I've been um, doing, I'm making pieces that I'm adding into the model's hair or onto their heads to like support the form. And so that piece orbit was like, this is, this is one of those like this added piece that had to be added on the hair as like a support to build on top of that. Um, and um, so like this here, Excuse me, not doing this right. Okay, here we go. Okay, so like this piece here is, um, it's like, you know, this, this might be like something that I might do and work from and build. And I use a lot of these like these caps here, like to build on because then I can glue on them and, um, and then I can also like try, they're adjustable, right? So like they can fit a variety of sides of heads, right? Um, so like I have a lot of these like beads, I'm gonna show, I have tons of bead stuff, but um, so like this is something that I've been um, kind of working at figuring out the logistics for is like how to do this type of like wrapping with something like that. And so it means I have to also build these, um, armatures and these supports to do that. So um, over here too, I have, um, I'm gonna show you this. I, um, so I have, um, these are some of the older forums that I've worked with that I showed, I said I would show you. These are like those discs that I showed you from those hats, right? Like I still have, and they still feel really relevant. They're just like a braid that I made and then, um, um, you know, and then like create this like kind of pinwheel. Um, I have a lot of these like, like pom-pom like forms. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then I also have this like 
like this, this took, you know, this took some time actually. Uh, but this is a, <laughs> this is so like- You created here. all those pom-poms. Did you like string them yourself? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> So um, yeah, so this is like, they're like sewn and, um, and I'm planning to use this now, you know, like in, um, in this and the pieces that I'm, the next photographic work pieces that I'm making. So, so like this stuff is still really relevant to me and it's odd because I, you know, I kind of forgot about some of it. And then it's like, you go back and you look and I'm like, oh, am I making like the same work that I like, started off making in some respects because this makes still sense. And so um, this is, um, so this was like another form that like okay. I had worked on. And, um, and a lot of these like things, as I said, like I was really interested, like kind of driven by the repetition and the time that was spent in building these forms. And so some of them just were aimless. They didn't go anywhere. They started and then they just didn't finish. And so I have lots of things like that. Baggies of um, hair. I think this is my hair. Um, and and um, these like, uh, these little like beady balls that I use for this stuff. I still have bags of it, right? So, um, so anyway, it, as they're flying out. Um, so anyway, um, I'm gonna show you also for here uh, is, and hopefully we hear, we're in focus well enough. So this is the material yeah. too. Is it in focus? It looks great, looks great. Okay, yep. okay. Um, this is the material that's used for the piece Sweet Tooth that's in the, in the gallery. Um, and you can see, since I'm talking about hair right now, I'm kind of keep it in the same theme here, uh, but these are, he, they're fused and you can see like on one side, there's like the texture. But on the other side, it's looking more like smooth and more like plastic. And it's, you know, it's that kind of quality that I, I really was enjoy. Now, I have a lot more than I used, right? Um, and so there's let, more of that, but. Let like me ask you a, a question, more. Althea. Uh, mm -hmm. Colors are so varied and vibrant. Are, is that all the original like synthetic hair color? Oh yeah. So there's tons of, um, excuse me, I have, um, you know, I have bags and bags of, of synthetic hair. And I mean, just to show you, like, this is just some of it, but I have like three or four containers of this um, heat, like in this building and I have ones at home and um, I've just kind of like continued to collect them as time has gone. But like, so these are some of the, um, bags that these came from, right? Like uh, wow. here, right? Like, so, you know, and they changed with the fashion trend, right? So like, these are actually like, you can still go and buy this, but right now what's more popular is the transitional color, the ombre, right? That's more popular right now, see more of that. But, um, but yeah, I have lots of, lots of different, this is, this one I think here, this curl was used for, um, the print um, rainbow. One of these is the one, oh, unicorn, excuse me. And this one is the one that was in um, the galaxy piece that's in the gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, and so and different hair textures represented here, like kind of the wave and the curl, looking for that um, um, through the packaging. So, okay. So let me go back to where I was like, let me, I'm gonna walk again. I'm gonna walk with you. I want to share and talk about this work here. Um, <clears throat> is, that, is that clear enough? Hopefully that's clear enough. Okay. I think it will be. All right. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> and so. So, the, so these are some of the forms that were in um, in the photo in the photographic work that's called Goody Girl, um, and you can see like this is just a it's it's wearable. It's a wearable piece, right? Like it comes off. It's a cap, really. Mm -hmm. um, and so most of these, I made them. 
I think about them like like sculpture like sculptural objects, right? But with the intention that they don't look like that and necessarily the photograph that they look like they're actually in um, the hair. But um, I've continued to work on um, these. This is the um, Goody Girl. Um, this is the print um, Goody Girl two, I think. Uh, but I've added to this so that it's like higher, more dramatic, more cone-like. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've also, I'm kind of like working on making these like, like, oh, like, know, that's like, like shoulder pads. Yeah. Um, so that they have these other kind of other, other elements that um, um, like another form of the accessory. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that kind of reveals how I think about them. I think about them as helmets in a way, um, um, some, you, you know, some more than others. Like a, a protective aspect of yeah. what the elements yeah. are? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, you know, and that that varies and some of them maybe more than others, but uh, this one, I don't know if it'll let me pick it up, but um, so this piece here, this was one of my, you know, this is one of my favorites really. Uh, and so it's okay. going through another, um, Oh, I, I'm gonna have to readjust my. Um, it's going through another variation of itself, and um, <laughs> and so um, you can see here. There's like a lot of these are all what's on this here are all different hair accessories or boggles, um, but they're all different forms. I love that the fact that these are like they're like charms, um, you know, um, and like there's like little butterflies in them and. Um, this is like a mohawk kind of like working out there, <laughs> um, kind of bad, you know, like um, bad in a good way. Right? Uh, so um, let me see here. This here, this is, you might recognize this from the piece that's in the gallery. And so this is a 3D printed, right, form and it's attached onto this other like um, really it's a, it's a headband really like, and so this is what's worn in that, in that piece there as one component. And so I'm going to take one of the things that I really love it with your work is the, uh, synthetic hair as you're kind of, uh, sort of fabricating that, how it has a similar feel and texture to the 3d printed work as well. You know, it's a, that kind of thin sort of stringy material. It has a relationship to each other. Yeah, yeah, they totally, yeah, they totally do. In fact, they're made with the, some of the same materials, right? Oh. Um, like, so the, the, well, and all plastics are a form of polymer, right? Like, well, a polymer in this case, we're like, these are plastics that have a little bit more like flexibility to them um, and, and um, the synthetic hair is a form of like a, oh, excuse me, it's the nylon that is what makes them more flexible. And the synthetic hairs are less nylon based um, polymer uh, plastic, but the synthetic, this, but excuse me, the 3D printed um, plastic is, you know, it's very similar too. Um, and so I'm just kind of showing, you know, this is, you know, cause this is a point of inspiration for all those 3D printed um, forms. Um, let me just show you like, so. Like if you see this, that's in the um, print, that's in the print, one of the prints I just showed. I'm gonna show it to you again. I'm gonna show it to you as it's like drawn form before it's printed. Uh, so this is kind of, um, this is just to show you kind of all this, like, I just love all this color. Now, aren't these garish and horrible looking? Oh my gosh, oh Lord. But I think this is gonna be another piece. Um, so I love that. I, you know, these are things all from those like supply store, right? Like, um, so, uh, oh, I love so that. these oh. are meant to be worn in the hair. Yes, these are meant to be worn as, these are corsages. Mm -hmm. These are meant to be pins. Okay. Which they work well on, you know, on an out, you know, outfit. So it kind of needs some context, but so, um, so, okay. Very cool. Let's see. Nope, excuse me, I'm thinking I'm reversing this here. So, okay. Althea, I, I understand that you're going to potentially show us a little working aspect of 
Yeah. Demo. How am I doing on time? Uh, we're at one fifty. Um, so. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm. Oh, I'm going way over. Okay. Let me. Let me <laughs> hurry <you>. up. <laughs> okay. I don't want to go over. I don't want to. You know. Um, we're but doing we're doing okay. Yeah, we're doing okay. So um, I. I'm just gonna like. Because I just said I would show it, so I feel like I need to show it. Okay, um, so sorry, David. I'm, I know this is taking <laughs> taking oh, a little okay. longer. Okay, um, but so like this is one of those prints, right? Like, and see that piece right there, right? Like that face that is that um, inspired by that same barrette. This is called um, a few virtues. It was a print that was done with Murray State. Um, this is another one um, that. I don't think I've ever really shown this piece, um, but you can see it's covered in these like dimensional form. This is all screen printed um, and then collaged. And then um, it, it's just like you've screen print and then you're cutting those out and then applying them. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so each one of those little uh, circles, I mean, approximately how many runs through the screen are you doing? Just oh, um, yeah, like, so this is just an example of like, because I make a sheet of them first, uh, ah, okay. and then I cut them out. And so I'm printing them first. And we might not have time for the printing, but I'll show you at least the screens. Um, but um, so I'm cutting them out, I'm cutting them out from this, but after I printed them, as so you can see, although you can see how like they have some dimensionality to them. But it really means that they exist in three different images. And so this is this is just what I want to um, share. Um, and to answer your question, David, this is like it's like this is like you can feel how heavy this is, right? With ink, um, this represents maybe like ten or so layers of ink built one on top of the other, and so they stay in registration. Uh, but let's see. Oh, I have too much to share with you. I want to share all this stuff with you. So oh, no, these good. are the these are the. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to hurry because I've just now remembered like there's other stuff I want to share with you too. So you can see these are the drawings, right? So that piece that um, the few virtues, right? I don't know if everyone can see that, right? Mm -hmm. These are like the drawing, you can see the barrette, but really it exists as three different layers of drawing. So this is the first layer. Mm -hmm. And then this is the second. It's printed on top of that. And then this is the final layer, right? And so you can see how I'm dividing up the information, which typically in printmaking would be based on color, um, but I'm dividing it based on its dimension, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so let's. I'm gonna transition here again. Oh, sorry. Not what I want to do. Um, so this is the screen, right? And you can see then that is then exposed into the screen and it is here, that's that bottom layer, bottom layer, second layer, third layer printed, right? So, so anyway, so so this is this is one that I was going to share with you in printing because I've printed the first two layers, right? But you can see there's not really much description here um but then this is the last layer to print on top of it which has the rest of um little dimension of the bottom ribbon and dimension of the rhythm as it overlaps and so that would then print on top of that oops, oops. so over here i have this i have a working area in here so i can do that that sort of thing in here this is um the ink that i'm working with though is a thicker ink right like it's a um it's really referred to as a plastisol ink. There's a lot of different forms of, uh, of these inks. These are commercial based inks that are really used predominantly for textile. Um, they have to be, in order to dry, they have to be um, heated. And, um, and so this is kind of like a, a helpful tool when I'm printing the way I am because um, I can heat them as they dry in between each layer, right? So I can, um, so I don't have to move anything. I can heat it and then, well, anyway, hopefully that, that makes sense. Um, I heat it and then I put on the next layer, right? I heat mm -hmm. it and then I put on the next layer. So as opposed to if I had to wait and wait for it to dry and take forever, uh -huh. yeah. okay. right? 
Um, so, okay. Um, okay, David, do I have time to show one more thing? Uh, we're running- So not printing? We're running close on time. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I think, um, I think we have time to ask a couple of questions because there's there's a couple of good questions in here. Catherine? Um, yes, we do have a question. I'm going to paraphrase. It's a combination of a couple of questions, actually. Um, the girls in the photographs that you've shown, how do they relate to the artworks? And have they made suggestions or changed the direction of your work in that respect? How have the girls? Relate? Have the girls changed the, the ones model? The models yeah. in your photographs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how do they react to it? Well, they first they react, um, first they love it, right? I mean, it's like you look at all this like color and all these, it's like playing dress up. So um, first they respond really well to it and are really enthused about it. And then um, really quickly are um, disinterested because of the weight and um, discomfort and inconvenience of the whole process. So by the time I try to photograph them, it's like a whole other ball game. So um, there are a number of, I mean, the majority of the, the work that's in the, um, that's in the gallery and that, um, you know, I settled on really was represents more than one photo session, right? Because um, depending on attention span and um, emotions, um, you know, um, so, if that helps add to it, but um, but it is there is a lot of there's always a lot of insight though it's it's true about like the the question being if it's changed or made me make some decisions differently, um, seeing how a young mind responds to some of the forms has really been informative for me has been inspiring, um, because um, yeah some things that I might associate with is like a particular symbol is really read as a totally different thing. Um, the satellite dishes that I've used, um, um, one of the first response was like, oh, a bouquet, flowers, oh, <laughs> you know, and it's like, it just gives you a new way of like a new fresh way of thinking about them. And then also thinking about the meaning that might also be implied. Okay, thanks. Um, I have one other question about your methods. Um, how is it that you're using those hair fibers to create the material that you've turned into, say, for example, the candy or the tubular forms? How are you doing that? Yeah, so I'm, I mean, the, to give up the ghost, it's like I am using um, uh, iron. So any, you know, like really the, the hair, the synthetic hair, it has a um, won't catch on fire, but it will melt. Um, and, um, and so I am just using an iron and I am pressing it under that heat and it, it fuses, not instantly, um, but it, it does like, it does kind of melt on itself, so yeah. So then you end up with like a sheet of fused fibers? Yeah, cut them yeah. In the shape that you want? Yeah. Okay. And so what I've shared is, um, what I've shared here in the gallery, excuse me, here in the studio is, um, and I'm just trying to move over to it so I can, so I can address that is, uh, um, what I've shared is um, like it's cut out, right? As a strip, but it would have been a whole sheet and very irregular, right? So, um, so I'm, you know, so I like through cutting it, I'm able to make other patterns and use those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very cool. Thank well, you. Althea, uh, I want to say we're just about out of time. So again, oh. thank you so much for your insightful talk and tour. Uh, thanks to everyone who signed up for this session today. And be sure to join us again on May 21st when we talk with Craig Heiberger, uh, Executive Director of the Jack Mitchell Archives outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Craig will be uh, sharing the behind the scenes aspects of photographer Jack Mitchell's sessions with many of the artists included in the upcoming exhibition, Jack Mitchell Artists, and give us a tour of the archives. You can sign up for that session now by visiting the museum's website at www.hsbmuseum.org. 
Uh, in the meantime, come and see the Encounters uh, Althea Murphy Price exhibition at the Huntsville Museum of Art. It's on view through Sunday, May 23rd. And again, thank you everyone. And thank you Althea for such a great uh, studio. Thank you guys. Thank you. I, just want, I wanted to thank all those that supported the exhibit. I mean, really it's like sincerely, it's, it's meant a lot to have, um, yeah, to, one to have that as support and um, yeah, it's wonderful to have the work there. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye.